My name is Karen Elizabeth Knudsen, and uh, I reside in Harvey, Illinois. And you've been a pastor for how long? I've been a pastor for, this is my 37th year. I was ordained in 1972 in the uh, LCA, Lutheran Church in America, mm -hmm. and served congregation and chaplaincy during that time from 72 till the merger in 88. At that time, I was called to serve on the uh, Synod staff as assistant to the bishop. At that time, uh, Bishop Sherman Hicks was a bishop, or was elected bishop in uh, a Metro Chicago Synod. And uh, I served on staff there. And that was a very interesting uh, time, obviously, not only for its historic value of the merging of major churches into the ELCA, but also because there were so many loose ends, as everybody knew, that uh, needed to be uh, cleaned up so that the first year was basically spent answering all kinds of questions to which there were not always answers. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, I also worked with the uh, a ministry committee um, relating to and meeting with um, students preparing for the ordained ministry. And uh, being in Chicago, we were close, close to the Lutheran School of Theology, so mostly the students were there, but not all of them. And it was uh, uh, well over 100 uh, students at all times to uh, relate to and work with. Um, so there was a whole new, uh, not always new guidelines, but a whole new uh, feeling in, in the new church and what it was going to be like to serve in the ELCA. As some of us had come from the LCA and some from the ALC and some from the English District of the Missouri Synod. Mm -hmm. uh, it was exciting and uh, uh, very, very challenging. Um, I was assigned to uh, parts of the Metro Chicago to work with congregations, and I believe, as I remember, about uh, 71 congregations that I had to relate to in the call process and in, in terms of uh, uh, their new merger with their brothers and sisters, often right next door. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that... Um, it was um, a, a full-time plus a job, but very, very exciting. And um, I in, enjoyed that very much for uh, five years. Mm -hmm. Did the Synod staff um, mesh together pretty well, coming from their different backgrounds? Yes, uh, there were actually five of us. And uh, we came from different backgrounds, but we were able uh, to work uh, well together, I believe and um, working often, we did things together in addition to just relating on a pretty regular daily basis, you know, in terms of uh, uh, what each staff person, each staff person had been assigned a variety of things. I was assigned to the ministry committee and the worship and um, others were assigned to other aspects. So we had to work together because each congregation had a need for all of us at some particular point. And what were some of the challenges working during that time with the congregations and the members of your synod? I think the, the biggest challenge was actually to uh, establish trust. Mm -hmm. um, there were probably based on what each pastor's past experience had been in terms of relationship to the uh, the, to the bigger church, the larger church, in this case, in the Synod. And um, that took a long time just to try to establish a trust between the pastor and their, the bishop or the bishop's office, that they would be treated uh, fairly and, and with respect as they were relating to their congregations and trying to interpret all the new things that we didn't even have all the answers for. So meeting with pastors in conferences and conference meetings and uh, meeting with individual pastors in the parishes. I, one of the things I very much enjoyed was I did take time to 
um, visit each of the congregations and, and meet with the pastor, find out what their ministry was. I had some advantage in having been, since my ordination, in that particular area. So a number of the congregations, I already knew them quite well, but I now knew them in a different role and people didn't always trust that, that because you were more knowledgeable about what was going on. And, uh, but it was uh, uh, fun to see congregations and meet with them and, and work with them, and especially during times when they were without a pastor. Were people pretty happy about the merger that you worked with, or were some of them upset? Um, I don't recall talking so much about that, more the particular issues that were coming up, and some of them had relationship to the merger and others were just regardless of the merger. Um, that was probably be a pretty split, but I think people had a basic willingness to make it work. But they depended on the bishop's office and the neighboring congregation and others to make it work, especially when you ended up with an LCA congregation and an ALC congregation and a former Missouri Synod Church in very close proximity of each other, but you were suddenly now the same church, and yet you were a different entity. And I don't know if you, uh, can you speak a little bit about, to, a little bit about um, the resignation of John Teachin in the Church of Chicago Synod right at the beginning? Yes, I uh, happened to be at the Synod Council at that time, so I was right in the in the mix of that. And um, it, it, for me personally, it was very painful because um, I, I knew the reasons that, that he resigned and uh, I had, uh, was one of the ones that supported the fact that there would be more input into the staff that would be selected, never knowing that I would end up later. But, um, I liked John Teachin. I had a great respect for him and his background. I had sat with him on the board of LSTC when I was a board, of, uh, board member there and uh, when he first became bishop. So I knew him quite well and it was a very painful situation. And in many ways, um, uh, though Chicago is always up with surprises, but it was still um, embarrassing, and uh, it was it was hard, and uh, I was not very thrilled about what happened at that time. Um, then, obviously, when I was considered staff, I had to step down from a council, being a, on the church council. But I was in the synodical council right at that time. Okay. Yeah, that was a painful, a very painful time when that happened. Um, well, to take you in a slightly different direction now, um, you've got a long history of being a pastor, and as you said, you were probably one of the first women ordained. Yes. Um, do you want to speak a little bit about how it's been to be a woman um, in the ELCA, and if anything has changed in the past 20 years for women pastors? Well, the one thing that has changed, as I always said, I didn't mind being the first, which I was in the Midwest but I didn't want to be the last. And uh, obviously history has shown that. And uh, it, uh, it took a lot of adjustments in the very beginning. And uh, though I won't go into the details, I could probably write a few volumes on what it was like in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the Holy Spirit has its own way of working. and. Uh, I have uh, found that overall it's been uh, uh, extremely exciting. Um, as long as a person stuck to the particular calling of word and sacrament and, uh, and stayed closely focused on that and carried that out in the parish, in the synods, in my chaplaincy work and in the intra ministries I've done, um, then God works through the people, and uh, the word is spread, and uh, people is able to grow in their faith, I believe. All right, well, thank you.
thank you for speaking with us today. You're welcome.